not defeat me. No, I know. <sighs> but he got it. The rules of this run are going to be fairly straightforward. We have to start and stay level 1 the entire run. We can only hit each boss one time. If there's multiple bosses in one fight, we're allowed one hit for each. If we can't one shot a boss, the run's dead. A single attack that hits multiple times with one button press counts as a one shot. Only melee hits are allowed, no incantations and no sorceries. Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? The first boss that we're after is Leonine Misbegotten. We're specifically targeting him for the Grafted Blade Greatsword because we desperately need the plus 5 to all stats. He has about 2200 HP and a weakness to fire and slash. We're going to be targeting the fire weakness with the plus 24 fire affinity greatsword. Now with this being our first boss, we're going to have a little bit more of a shopping list because we have to go and get our weapon and all the things we need to upgrade it. As with any playthrough in Elden Ring, we're going to start off in Limgrave and there's 5 things that we need here. We're going to start off with the strength not crystal tier for an additional 10 strength when used in our flask. This will help us use some of those bigger weapons. From here, we're going to grab the Ash of War Golden Vow to add that 11.5% damage to our pre-buff routine. Now we're going to grab the Axe Talisman, which will increase charged attack damage by 10%. This will be very useful with our Greatsword. Very close nearby in Mistwood is also the Spike Crack tier, which will increase charged attack damage by 15% and keep in mind that these items stack. Now the final item to pick up before leaving Limgrave is going to be the flask which will let us utilize the strength knot tier and the spike crack tier. Now we're going to be using the way gate right behind that church to travel over to Kaelin where we need to quickly grab three things. First we're going to grab the Radagon sword seal because we need the extra five strength and dexterity. Then we're going to go grab the red hot wet blade while we can before the festival begins so that we can put the fire affinity on our weapons. And speaking of weapons the final item we're grabbing is the great sword. It's one of the highest AR weapons in the game and it only requires 21 strength and 12 dex while two handing. So now we'll be using the hidden path on the east side of Stormville Castle to head north up to Lyernia. We're going to grab the Two Fingers Heirloom for the additional 5 Faith. We're going to be needing that for our pre-buff routine later on. Now we're going to use the Grand Lift Adectus to access the Altus Plateau and we're going to be grabbing 4 items up here. The first item is the Smithing Stone Miner's Bell Bearing 2 for unlimited access to Smithing Stone 3s and 4s. Then we're going to head to a nearby camp and grab a Perfume Bottle which is required for crafting the Perfume items we're going to be using to buff later on. Now we're heading to the north side of the Broken Bridge. We're after the Hyma Glinstone Crown because it increases Strength and Intelligence by 2. Then we're going to pick up the Perfumer's Cookbook 2 which gives us access to crafting Blood Boil Aromatic. These provide a 30% damage buff to physical damage. At this point I use the zip to jump from the capital outskirts to the Forbidden Lands. Since most of you are probably unfamiliar, I'll put a link in the description with my video going over exactly how I do this. Basically all it requires is for you to zip across the gap and then kill yourself while you're in range of the Stake of America. That way when you die you get to choose to respawn at the Stake in the Forbidden Lands, at which point you can just ride up to the Grand Lift of Rolled and then wrong warp your way to the top of it, granting you access to the mountaintops of the Giants. Early access to this area is huge. It gives us access to the Smithing Stone Miner's Bell Bearing 3, and therefore unlimited Smithing Stone 5 and 6 to allow us to take weapons up to level 18. It also gives us access to the skip to the Consecrated Snowfield. For those of you unfamiliar with this skip, I'll also have a link in the description to a video detailing how to do this as well. It's a pretty simple skip. All you really need to do is use the Spirit Spring to jump off the map here. As soon as your camera changes angles, you jump left, and then you fall down until your camera starts moving again, you quit out, and now you're in the Consecrated Snowfield. Grabbing a set of Grace here is always priority number one so that we can come back at any time. At this point I had everything I needed to take my greatsword up to plus 18. Then I used the abductor at the bottom of the academy to transport myself to Volcano Manor so I could grab a few things. For those that don't know, getting eaten by that abductor actually transports you to Volcano Manor. Upon arrival, my wife had this brilliant idea to try zip glitching up to this ledge that you used to be able to jump on before they patched it out. If you're having trouble zipping, you can always use the normal godskin skip as well. We want to grab the Royal Knight Resolve Ash of War for the 80% damage buff. Then before leaving, I farmed a Black Dumpling Helm, which provides a 10% damage buff for 60 seconds after you proc Madness. Speaking of proccing Madness, now it's time to head over to the Weeping Peninsula, where we're going to be picking up the Flame of Frenzy incantation. Now we're only getting this incantation for use with our Black Dumpling Helm to build up and proc that madness in our pre-buff routine. Now we're going to be using a transporter chest to travel from the Weeping Peninsula to the capital. This transporter chest is located in the Tower of Return, and using it will take you to a site of grace in the west side of the capital. This site of grace is cut off from the rest of the capital, so we're going to do what's called a capital wrong warp to gain access to the main part of the capital. If you're confused with what wrong warping is, I'll have a link in the description below, but basically what it is is just quitting out during the loading screen on your way to the round table. Once we're in the capital, we're going to come over and farm these guys for an item called the Commoner's Garb. This is a piece of armor that increases your faith by one which we need for the Flame of Frenzy. Then I went and grabbed the necessary smithing stone 7s and 8s. If you're curious, I did just put out a video called Plus 25 Weapon with No Bosses that shows you the exact route. I now have everything I need to take my greatsword up to plus 24 and start one-shotting some bosses. 
Now, just so you guys understand, I can't just walk in and one-shot these bosses. I'm going to show in double speed the pre-buff routine that I used for this first fight. For your sanity, I'm not going to be showing the pre-buff routine in every fight. There are a couple fights later on, like the Gods Can Duo, where the buff routine is actually part of the fight. So I'm going to use those to demonstrate the actual buff routine once we have all the items. This was a great first step for us because this gives us access to the Oath of Vengeance skill and therefore plus 5 to all attributes. Our next target is going to be the Kindred of Rot. This fight is actually a double boss and they have around 3000 HP with a weakness to physical and fire damage. So we're going to again use the Greatsword with the Fire Affinity. Upon defeat, this boss will award us with the Kindred of Rot's Exaltation. Now there's only one item we need to prepare for this boss, it's in the Altus Plateau, and it's called the Raptor's Black Feathers. This is a piece of armor that increases your jump attack damage by 10%. Now we can add the Kindred of Rot's Exaltation Talisman to our pre-buff routine, which raises our attack power by 20% for 20 seconds after self-poisoning. Our next target, Margit, is both blocking our progression and holding our first Talisman pouch. Margit has almost 4200 HP with a weakness to Slash, Magic, Fire, and Lightning damage. But we're once again going to target that Fire weakness with the Fire Affinity Greatsword. Now there's two items we're going to need before taking on Margit, and both of them are located in Limgrave. We're going to buy the Armor's Cookbook 2, which allows us to craft neutralizing boluses, which cure poison. Then we're going to head over and pick up the Nomadic Warrior's Cookbook 4. This allows us to craft fetid pots and self-poison to proc the Kindred of Rot's Exaltation. This Talisman Pouch is actually a big damage increase because it allows us to use a second Talisman. Up next we're heading back below the capital to kill Asgar, Priest of Blood. This sealed boss has about 3500 HP with no real specific weaknesses, but we're just going to stick to the Fire Greatsword for now. The objective here is the Lord of Blood's Exaltation. Now with the Lord of Blood's Exaltation equipped, we can proc a self-bleed during our pre-buff routine for 20% more damage for 20 seconds. Now it's time to one-shot our first demigod, Godric the Grafted. This boss has over 6,000 HP and a weakness to physical damage. So to take advantage of that weakness, we're going to go with the Heavy Affinity on the Greatsword. The objective here is Godric's Great Rune, which gives us plus 5 to every stat. We only need two items to pull this off. The first item is located in the mountaintops of the Giants, and it's called Seppuku. Using this Ash of War causes blood loss and will proc your Lord of Blood's Exaltation Talisman. The next item is actually in Stormvale, right on our way to Godric. It's the Iron Wet Blade, and it lets us put the heavy affinity on our weapons to do a lot more physical damage. This will be our go-to for bosses weak to physical. I am the Lord of all that is one day. The additional 5 attributes we get from Godric's Great Rune actually make a lot of things possible for us now at level 1. Our next target is the Red Wolf of Radagon. The main reason we came here next is because this boss blocks our progression to Renala. With only around 2200 HP and a general physical weakness, especially to Slash, this shouldn't be too difficult of a fight. Now we can move on to Renala, who's a legend boss. Renala's weak to all physical damage. She has about 3500 HP in phase 1 and just around 4100 in phase 2. Because she provides a second great rune, Renala will give us access to another talisman pouch. We're going to target her weakness to physical damage with the heavy greatsword. Yeah. 
Now that we have a third talisman slot, we can start to really turn up the damage. So now we're going to go kill a boss to help us fill that slot. The death bird in the scenic isle is going to give us the red feathered brand sword talisman. It has almost 5600 HP and a weakness to strike and holy damage. We're going to target that holy weakness with the holy great sword. First, we're going to need to travel to the capital and pick up the sanctified web blade. This will allow us to put sacred and lightning affinities on our weapons from here out. But let's see if it helps. Not bad. Keep in mind that the headshot helped a little bit. So from here out, we want to utilize the Red Feather Brand Sword, which raises our attack power by 20% when our HP is below 20%. While we're in the Death Bird and the Red Tear Stone-ish zone, we're going to head over to the Capital Outskirts Death Bird. This boss has almost 8600 HP, but also has a weakness to strike and holy. So we have the exact same plan of attack here. We're after another low HP item called the Twin Bird Kite Shield. Wimberg Kite Shield raises your attack power by 5% when your HP is below 20%. It stacks with the Red Feather Brand Sword Talisman, so when you see us at really low health in the rest of these boss fights, these items are the reason. Our next target is Royal Knight Loretta. She's blocking progression for an item that we need for the next boss. Loretta only has about 4200 HP and a weakness to Lightning. We're going to target that weakness with the Lightning Great Sword. So with the red out of the way, we can use this cool little skip to Rena's Rise and use the Waygate to get to the Ansel River main. From here, we're going to run all the way down to the Lake of Rot and pick up the Mushroom Crown. Similar to the Kindred of Rot, this increases our damage by 10% for 20 seconds after we self-poison. Now it's time to take out Golden Shade Godfrey for our final talisman pouch. He has about 7100 HP and a weakness to pierce and lightning damage. I've previously only ever seen him killed with counterattacks from pierce damage, so I wanted to spice it up and kill him with a heavy greatsword. Now that we have all four talisman pouches, we can pick up a couple more items and really min-max our damage. Our first roadblock in the progression to those items is the Mimic tier. This boss will clone your character with any weapons, armor, spells, and consumables that you're using. We're just going to keep it simple with the Heavy Great Sword. Now in order to reach Nocron this early without completing the festival, I did another Wrong Warp. Again, if you're unsure what Wrong Warping is, I'll have a link in the description. This one's pretty simple, it's just a matter of resting at Sea Alpha River and quitting out at the right time. Now on to the real reason that we're down here, the Regal Ancestor Spirit. This boss is a legend with 7000 HP and a weakness to physical fire and holy damage. We're going to be targeting that weakness with the Fire Greatsword. The objective here is this boss's remembrance weapon, the Winged Great Horn. Now the skill on this weapon is called the Soul Stifler, and what this does is it creates an AoE debuff that lowers defenses of enemies by 30%. Our next target is Commander O'Neill. He has 9200 HP and his main weakness is to pierce damage, but we're going to one-shot him with the Heavy Greatsword. Our objective here is to get the Commander Standard. The 20% damage buff from the Rallying Standard skill makes the Commander Standard one of the best pre-buff tools in the game. So now it's time to tackle the Godskin Duo. This is a double boss with a shared HP bar, and that HP bar is over 26,000. Luckily, they're weak to physical, so we can target that with the Heavy Greatsword, and we're going to have to throw every buff we have at this. The objective here is to get the Smithing Stone Miner's Bell Bearing 4. There's only two things we need to add to our armory for this fight, the first of which is in Limgrave. We need the Favors Cookbook 1. This cookbook grants access to crafting sleep pots, which we're going to need in the upcoming fight. Then we're going to head up to the northeast side of Lyurnia and one shot Vike for the Vike's War Spear.
We'll just be using the Frenzy Flame Thrust skill as an alternative way to build madness. At this point, I did the wrong warp to crumbling for our Missoula. I'll have a link in the description. Basically, you come to the Fort Belfries, use the Imbued Sword key, and take the Waygate. You'll get to the small side area of the crumbling farm Missoula. At this point, you just need to go to the round table and then quit out just as the loading screen gets full. If timed correctly, you'll be at the beginning area of the crumbling farm Missoula. I'm going to use this fight to show you guys what the pre-buff routine looks like in its entirety. So with the smithing stone miners bell bearing 4, we now have access to unlimited smithing stone 7s and 8s, which means we can take any weapon to plus 24 now. Now we're ready to take down our next demigod. Morgoth has about 10,400 HP and is weak to physical, magic, fire, and lightning damage. Rather than the usual pierce counterattack damage bonus, we're going to do something that I don't think has been done yet and one shot Morgoth at level 1 with a heavy giant crusher. Now to pull this off, we're going to have to grab a couple things. The first two are up in Altus Plateau. We're going to one shot this tree spirit first. Now we can grab the Giant Crusher, one of the highest AR weapons in the game. We're going to need 40 strength in order to use it though. Now we're going to head west and grab the Perfumer's Cookbook 1 for access to crafting the Uplifting Aromatic. This allows you to take one big hit with 90% damage reduction and stay alive. And while we're here, we're going to grab both of the perfume bottles that are located here in the ruins as well. At this point, we're going to head back to Kaelid and head all the way to the southwest to pick up the Star Scourge Heirloom Talisman. This raises our strength by 5 and combined with everything else should give us enough strength to use the Giant Crusher. So at this point, I used the Waygate in the Consecrated Snowfield to travel to Mogwin's Palace to one-shot Nameless White Mask. Similar to the Lord of Blood's Exaltation, the White Mask Helm increases your attack power by 10% for 20 seconds after proccing a bleed. That uplifting aromatic definitely saved my life there. Our next boss is going to be the Crystallians. Most one-shot challenges actually skip this boss, but you can actually one-shot them with strike damage. This is a double boss fight, and they each have around 1700 HP. Our goal here is just to get past them and get Terra Magica. We're going to take advantage of their weakness to strike with the Heavy Giant Crusher. Terra Magica is just a spell that puts a blue glyph on the ground that increases your magic damage by 35% while standing in it. We don't quite need this yet, but everything we're doing here is sort of in preparation for the Fire Giant. Our next target is the Urtree Avatar in the Mausoleum Compound. This boss has about 4700 HP, is weak to strike, and extremely weak to fire. The objective here is the Magic Shroud and Crack tier, and the Fire Giant Crusher should do a ton of damage here. The Magic Shroud and Crag tier provides a 20% damage bonus to all magic damage. Our next objective is the Godfrey Icon Talisman, but we need to kill Godfrey and his Everjail. While he is weak to physical, he does have almost 12,500 HP, but we're going to be using the Heavy Giant Crusher. The 
Godfrey Icon Talisman raises the attack power of charged skills and spells by 15%. Our next target is just the Solo Crystalian. This boss has the same 1700 HP that we saw in the duo and the same weakness to strike. We want the Smithing Stone Miner's Bell Bearing 1 here, so we'll make quick work of this with the Heavy Giant Crusher again. This was our last smithing stone miner's bell bearing. With this, we have the convenience of purchasing all smithing stones 1 through 8 now. Our next target is the scaly misbegotten. This should be a fairly easy boss to one shot with only 1300 HP and weaknesses to pretty much everything. Here we're after a very unique weapon called the rusted anchor and we'll be using the heavy giant crusher. The Rusted Anchor is a great axe, but it actually does pierce damage, making it the highest pierce damage weapon in the game. But this is important because counterattacks are exclusive to pierce damage and provide an additional 30% extra damage. So this one's actually sort of annoying. We actually only have to one-shot the Demigod Star Scorch Radon because we need to progress Alexander and his quest line. Radon has almost 9600 HP and his only weakness is pierce. So we're going to use that heavy Rusted Anchor and try to get a big counterattack. Also another good showcase of how clutch that uplifting aromatic is. At over 43,000 HP, the fire giant has the most health of any boss in the game. This legend is weak to physical, magic, and lightning damage. We're going to be specifically targeting that magic weakness. The goal here is going to be to tumble buff the Royal Knight's Resolve onto a Maseric Cord with the Carrion Grandeur Ash of War. As you probably already put together by now, we're going to need a couple things. The first of which is in Stormville Castle, we're going to need the Maseric Cord. This is one of my favorite weapons, it has the highest crit damage of any weapon in the game. We need a staff to cast Terra Magica, so we're going to go and grab the Meteorite Staff in Caleb. This is the most powerful early game staff in Elden Ring. Inscaling doesn't affect Terra Magica, this is just easily accessible. Now we need to grab a couple of things over in Lyrnia. For the first item, we have to pull a really scummy move and one-shot Alexander. Nice. I see it. The Warrior Jar Shard boosts the attack power of skills by 10%, and unfortunately we can't wait for this for the end of his questline because we need it for Fire Giant. Next we grab the Intelligence Not Crystal tier for the extra 10 intelligence. We need as much intelligence as we can get with this magic setup. We need to grab the Magic Scorpion Charm which increases magic damage by 12%. To get this we have to do a couple things for Saluvis. Then grab the Carrion Grandeur Ash of War. Fully charged, this is one of the highest damage skills in the entire game. Now we need to head up near Mount Galmir and grab the Golden Vow Incantation. This is different from the Ash of War as it provides a 15% damage bonus for a whopping 80 seconds. Then we need to grab the Spellblade set for a 2% damage bonus per piece. With the 3 pieces we're using it should be a total of 6% damage bonus on your Carrion Grandeur. And then we need to upgrade our Misericord to plus 25. If you're not interested feel free to fast forward through the buff routine here. I just left this in for those that were curious how to buff for magic as opposed to how we did it for physics. Physical. Thanks to the fire giant falling down and taking 10% of his health as damage, we're able to kill him in one hit. Progressing on, our next boss is Malekith. Malekith has no specific weaknesses and he has about 10,600 HP. This fight's actually two bosses sharing the same health bar. Though we're allowed two hits on this boss, we're going to try to take them both out with one hit. Our plan of attack will be the exact same as the fire giant. Unlike the fire giant, this boss is not weak to magic, so we're going to grab something to see if it gets us a little more damage. The Twin Sage Glintstone Crown from the Academy increases your intelligence by 6. This should definitely help since carrying grander scales off intelligence. From me. 
so all the buffs in combination with the headshot turned out to be enough damage to one-shot both bosses. The game takes a couple seconds to figure out that Malekith can't come out and then it will award us the kill. It's nice to see that we're at Gideon because we know we're getting close. It's also nice because Gideon's fairly easy to one-shot for a boss this late in the game. He has 6200 HP and a weakness to lightning. So our plan here is just to smash him with the lightning giant crusher. To become Elven Lord, what a sad state of time. No, in my bones, a tarnished cannot become a lord. Now on to Godfrey and Horalu, in my opinion the coolest boss in the game. The plan of attack here is the same as the Fire Giant or Malekith, and similar to the Beast Clergyman and Malekith, this boss is actually two bosses with a shared health bar as well. The first issue here is that their shared HP bar is about 22,000, which is really only a problem because in Phase 1, Godfrey has a lot more resist than Horalu does. So the name of the game here is Progression. I'm perfectly happy just one-shotting each of them at level 1, especially with the amount of health and resist that the first boss Godfrey has. There's a few things we need to one-shot the Elden Beast, the first of which is the Marius Executioner Sword, but we need to one-shot Elmer, which shouldn't be too big of a deal because he's only got 4900 HP, so we'll just go smash him really quick with the Heavy Giant Crusher. We're actually after the AOK's Dancing Blade here, not the weapon itself. We're going to be move swapping this with a much higher AR weapon and taking advantage of the corkscrew attack that hits multiple times. In order to progress Millicent's questline, we have to kill the Godskin Apostle at the Windmill Village. This version of this boss has around 7400 HP and is weak to all physical except strike damage. Unfortunately, you either die a hero, or in our case, you live long enough to see yourself become a villain. As terrible as this was, we really needed Millicent's prosthesis. We're gonna need both the 5 dexterity and the attack power with successive attacks later. Now believe it or not, the Godskin Apostle in the Divine Tower of Caelid is one of the hardest bosses in this run. This version of the Godskin Apostle has much higher resistances and almost 14,400 HP. We need to one-shot this boss in order to gain access to the Godslayer's Greatsword. We're gonna use a heavy Greatsword plus 25 for this. First we need to head back to the mountaintops of the Giants and grab the Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone there. Now we could have grabbed this when we killed the fire giant, but we didn't really need it at that point. Now it's time to head back to the blacksmith, upgrade our greatsword to plus 25, and we're ready to one-shot this godskin apostle. We now have access to the godslayer's greatsword, which we're going to move swap into the AOK's dancing blade for the Elden Beast. Our last boss prior to the Elden Beast is going to be the Putrid Avatar in Consecrated Snowfield. Like the Urtree Avatar earlier, this boss is weak to strike and extremely weak to fire. The difference is that this boss has an HP pool of almost 12,600. We need the thorny cracked here, so we're going to make it work with the fire giant crusher. Now the thorny crack tier is similar to Millicent's prosthesis but provides an even larger damage bonus on successive attacks. Now that we've reached the Elden Beast, it's only fitting that we one-shot a god with the god slayer's greatsword. We're going to do this with a move swap, a term that's very familiar to those who've played Dark Souls. We're basically going to use the damage of the god slayer's greatsword in the movement of the Aokade's dancing blade that hits multiple times. In theory this will be enough damage to one-shot both Radagon and the Elden Beast. Radagon has a little over 13,000 HP and the Elden Beast has over 22,000 HP. In order to make this work, we're going to need a couple things. The first of which is the Uchi Katana and Limgrave. We're going to need that in our offhand in order to make the move swap work. 
The next item is more of a convenience item. We're going to head to the northeast section of Liernia and we're going to grab the Frenzy Flamestone there. You could just drop this on the ground and it will constantly build up madness to proc your Black Dumpling. Now in order to level up the God Slayer's Greatsword, I noticed I was missing a Somberstone 6, so I went to the mountaintops of the Giants and got the Somberstone Miner's Bell Bearing 3, which allows me access to buy Somberstone 5s and 6s. Then I went back to the capital of Ash and picked up the Somber Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone there, and with that I had everything I needed to upgrade my God Slayer's Greatsword to plus 10. Right, guys i hope you enjoyed if you did be sure to smash that like button if you want to see more you can always subscribe or head over to our channel if you're new to elden ring i highly recommend you go and check out some of our starter guides we appreciate you guys watching we'll see you guys next time stay dangerous